Samsung sent over their 960 Pro and 960 Evo SSDs. These are M.2 NVMe drives, they're actually pretty awesome, pretty fast, and we're going to take a look at them in the video, so do stick around. Now these are standard 2280 M.2 drives, as I said they're both NVMe, the Pro is the 1TB model with the Evo being the 256GB model, although the Pro drives do go up to 2TB if you really want to. These are both single-sided drives, so if you do have one of those sort of heat shield type things, you might actually benefit from this as, as I'll mention in a second. These do have some uh, sort of heat uh, overheating issues as well, so uh, just do bear that in mind. They're standard M.2 drives, they will fit in most AM4, Z170, Z270 and the like motherboards, so uh, yeah, let's take a look at them. Both of these drives use Samsung's VNAN flash with their Polaris controller, uh, a version, different version of each I believe, and the controller chip is actually the one closest to the M.2 key, the actual slot itself, and is the chip that gets the hottest by far on both of the drives. Now on the Evo, I did have some thermal throttling issues, I also had some issues with the SLC buffer filling up, I believe it dynamically fills up to a total of 13 gigabytes, so if you're filling up the drive or copying anything more than about 13 gigabytes to the drive, the SLC buffer will fill up and therefore will dramatically slow down performance. You also have fairly hard thermal throttling issues on potentially both of the drives as well, so again that's just something to bear in mind. When it comes to performance, because these are M.2 NVMe X4 drives, these are incredibly, incredibly fast, uh, ridiculously impressive scores, so especially in the synthetic applications, stuff like ATTO and Crystal Disk Mark, we're seeing upwards of 3.5 gigabytes per second reads with 2.2 gigabytes per second writes on the Pro Drive. I did have a few issues with the AS SSD testing, especially on the write speeds. Uh, this, the test that you're currently seeing should be the ATTO one uh, included, as well as AS SSD and Crystal Disk Mark and my real world GTA 5 copy test. Uh, which is actually pretty impressive. It maxed out uh, just shy of a gigabyte per second, although the average was about 800 megabytes per second, so really impressive. That's hitting the reads and the writes. Uh, but ASSSD, especially on the writes there, uh, was running on about 180 megabytes per second there. Uh, a previous test I actually recorded without ATTO was somewhere around 500, but again, Crystal Disk Mark and AT ATTO were seeing well over two gigabytes per second on writes for those uh, you know, that test, so I'm not entirely sure what the problem is with that one. When it comes to the Evo drive, since this is a fairly cheap drive compared to the Pro, it, it was a little bit slower in pretty much all of the tests. In the synthetic test, we're seeing about 3.3, 3.2 gigabytes per second, uh, which is a couple hundred megabytes a second slower than the Pro. In the writes, we're seeing, I think, 1.5, 1.6 gigabytes per second, which again is somewhere between five and 600 megabytes per second slower than the Pro. And then the more real-world uh, GTA 5 copy test which hits the reads and the writes. Uh, that was I think about uh, 200 megabytes per second average slower there. Although after say 13 or so gig for example, uh, the th uh, speed for the Evo just utterly crashed to about 200 megabytes per second as you can see here. Uh, it's just a really very slow speed for an M.2 NVMe uh, X4 SSD. So uh, this is potentially due to the SLC buffer issue as well as due to uh, the thermal throttling issues. The, the controller chip got ridiculous ridiculously hot. I don't have a thermal probe to be able to give you the exact temperature, but it was far too hot to touch, uh, so that sort of gives you an idea that it's, you know, running pretty hot. So what are my thoughts on these drives? So the Pro is really standout when it comes to its performance. It's ridiculously fast. Of course, it does have the price to match that being both more expensive than the Evo and more expensive than a standard two and a half inch SSD. So if you are a budget conscious buyer that just wants an SSD for their boots and stuff like that, you know, uh, to put their OS on and stuff like that, then I don't think either of these drives are necessarily the ones that I would recommend you go for. Unless maybe you're going for a small form factor, you know, ITX build, and you really care about the space and in which case the Evo drive might be the one for you. But especially if you're looking for sustained writes at you know, very high speeds, then the Pro is the one to go for here as the Evo just can't quite hold up to that. If you are using the Evo to you know, install your operating system, install a couple games uh, and just use it as your regular boot drive, then I don't think you're really gonna run too much of an issue with that, especially considering the read speeds are phenomenal anyway. So as long as you don't write to the SSD too much, the Evo is probably the one to go for. When it comes to scoring, I think I need to score these independently 
definitely. So starting off with the Pro, I think this is a very expensive, very awesome drive. I think it's probably a 3.5 or 4 for Vive Money, one of the two, uh, with a 5 for performance. When it comes to functionality, I'm going to go with a 4.5 because of the thermal issues. This one is mildly affected as well, so that is something to bear in mind. When it comes to styling, because of the black PCB, it fits very well with a lot of systems, so I'm going to go with a 5 here, and I think Touching Me score of a 4 with a Worth Money Award. If you're after a high-end SSD, especially one that can do sustained writes, uh, reads and all that sort of stuff uh, with ridiculously fast numbers, then this is the one to go for. As for the Evo drive, I think for me this is going to be a 4 to 4.5 for Vive Money. Uh, same on performance level actually because of the SLC issue as well as the thermal throttling. Uh, when it comes to uh, functionality, this is also going to be in that range as well, uh, with styling again going to be a 5. I think Touching BB score is going to be a 4, uh, and I think this still technically gets a worth money award because for me it's a fantastic drive if you don't necessarily need you know high speeds high speed writes all the time for large files and that sort of thing if you are just using it as a boot drive it's a great space saver there's a lot of uh, size options available in fact the pro actually goes up to two terabytes which is incredible for something this size and overall just that yeah really impressive drives if you want to know any more about these drives or check the pricing when you watch the video and where you are feel free to look at the links in the description down below if you're buying anything else on Overclockers UK or Amazon, please do use the links in the description down below as well. It genuinely does help me out. All you have to do is click the link before you buy something, I think up to 24 hours before you buy something. Uh, and otherwise, that is pretty much that. Uh, if you want to follow me on Facebook and Twitter, it's ActTechTeamTV on both of them. It's very simple. Uh, I post a lot of stuff on there fairly regularly, so feel free to check me out. Otherwise, feel free to check out some of the other videos I'll leave over here for you and the subscribe button over this side. Feel free to subscribe if you enjoy the video, like and share it if you know anyone who wants one of these super fast SSDs and otherwise uh, yeah thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it hope you found it useful and we'll see you all in the next video